There's a new documentary about international mail, the glossy 80s catalog that sold loincloths, puffy shirts. Uh, take a look. Once upon a time, a small band of outsiders formed an unlikely family, and together they created something that would change the way men would look at themselves and how the world would look at them. When you say international mail, I get very excited. It was Victoria's Secret for men. 20 pages of just men in their underwear. It made me feel like, whoa. We called it international mail. There's a new documentary on the story of the international mail catalog, a catalog that forever changed men's fashion along with the public's perception of masculinity and sexuality. It's called All Men, the International Mail Story. Peter Jones is the documentary's writer and producer. Peter, thank you for being Hi, with us. Good morning. Can't we talk about Project Grizzly or my Gino <laughs> Zist uh, Chicago pizza? Nice. Oh, look at, look at, bring it. How do, you, how do you happen to have that on hand? Gold Belly, goldbelly.com. Don't want to promote another sponsor. Ah. But, uh, you can get food from all your favorite places ah. around the world and Gino Zist. How about that? One of my faves. Fabulous. Right. Well, you know, tell us how International Mail came about, would you? <laughs> A guy from Sheboygan, Wisconsin, Gene Burkhart, had this notion that men were just not dressing with any style. They had jeans, they had t-shirts. He said, let's offer low priced fashion for men, but not make it too daring. And most of the customers were women buying for their boyfriends or husbands because men just did not like to go shopping. But I remember in the 90s, I used to do this thing where it kind of made fun of some of the fashions in there. They were bizarre. I mean, like pirate shirts and safari outfits and purple suede trench coats. As somebody once said, that seemed more like uh, for a, a straight couple having an orgy in the suburbs. <laughs> but the, uh, the puffy shirt from the Seinfeld, famous Seinfeld yeah. episode, that puffy shirt now hangs in the Smithsonian along with Mr. Rogers' sweater wow. and Judy Garland's ruby slippers. Unbelievable. And a lot of famous people uh, were in the catalog over the years. I think we have some of those pictures. Ah, Let's see. Uh, well, Cameron Diaz was. I can. Uh, you all can imagine Cameron Diaz from. Sure. Was that the thing about Mary, that famous scene. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. And I think we're just and, scrolling through pictures here. But uh, tell us the impact this had um, on on men's fashion and and sexuality. It had an unintended huge impact on the gay community because the models were good looking men and they were wearing scantily clad uh, clothing. And so for this to appear in a little gay boy's a mailbox in the middle of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, <laughs> this was a gateway for a lot of uh, young men to come out was actually seeing the international mail catalog along with their mother's, you know, catalogs for slacks. Why did this go away? Obviously online came about, but I, 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 cause I went looking for it about a year ago just to follow up on some of the silly fashions that we used to make fun of. And I, I really couldn't find it anywhere. Well, you know, it was bought by a big catalog company and that's when it got crazy with the sort of bad taste stuff uh, but people kind of like bad taste because it did much bigger business than when the original owner gene burkhardt had it huh. but that just goes to show yeah now people can get everything online and you miss the brick and mortar nature they have two stores in los angeles and also san diego huh. it's just a wonderful thing people would go to the store and it was their social life people would meet via the catalog and the store so it really created kind of a social movement of men feeling okay getting together wearing more stylish clothes and uh just feeling a little more free it's no accident that it came it started in the year 1976 the year of the bicentennial mm. so freedom so, from the mail was did, their slogan. do you feel like this catalog had an impact on you know like today's fashion we see very gender neutral clothing you know you see oh stars on the runway wearing men wearing skirts timothy chalamet wearing like kind of a halter top is this just blurred the lines where Really, men can do anything they want now as far as fashion. 100%. Uh, 
Yeah, that's the sound bite. You just said what I would have said. It it did, and it gave people just uh, men and women uh, the freedom to experiment, especially with color. You know, somebody in the film says men just didn't wear color, but when you watched Miami Vice, that was a real shift for people to watch on national television. Men wearing pastels. Mm-hmm. Mm. And in the 90s, when 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 I discovered this kind of in its heyday, that, that it was in the midst of the, the AIDS crisis, what, um, how did that impact all this? It, it's a very sad story. Gene Burkhart, who from Sheboygan, Wisconsin, he built that company with a very small crew. Most of them were gay men that had been rejected by their own families. And when AIDS came, it decimated the international male staff and Gene was so afraid he didn't think he would be able to do it without the friends that brought the catalog you know to the world for the first time so he did sell the company and it was really because of AIDS and Gene wow. losing all his friends. Oh, sad. Well, you can see All Man, the international male story at the Chicago Reeling LGBT Film Festival that Sunday at Landmark Century Center Cinema, and it's streaming from September 30th to October 6th as well, and you can see the sights there on our screen. Thanks, Pete. Thanks. Thank you, guys.